Here are 10 questions pro-Palestinians can't answer. Why do you care? So my first question is one that I've asked in the past, but still never got an answer to. Why do you care so much about the Palestinians? There are so many demonstrations in support of Gaza. Hundreds of thousands of pro-Palestinians are marching through the streets of major cities. Yet nobody is marching for the people of Yemen and Syria. Not the Arabs and not the students in Western universities. And I'm asking you why. There are 800,000 dead in Syria and Yemen, and you are silent. And there are 20,000 dead in Gaza, half of them terrorists, and you are outraged. Now, you have two possible answers to this question. Neither is great, but as I see it, you don't have any other good options. The first answer is that you expect more from Israel than you expect from the Arabs. Now, if you expect more from Israel, that means you expect less from the Arabs, and that makes you a racist. I'm not sure you want to be put in that box. Another option is that you are a hypocrite. It is cool to be pro-Palestinian, so although you know that far greater atrocities are happening not far from here, you choose to ignore them. By the way, you don't have to limit yourself. You can be both a hypocrite and a racist. If you have a better answer, please share it with me. I want to understand why you are outraged when talking about Israel, but Syria and Yemen and Sudan? Oh, it's a humanitarian crisis. What can we do? Let's move on to the next question, the oppressed people of the Middle East. Let's say you woke up this morning in Berlin, Madrid, or Wisconsin, and you thought to yourself, I want to support oppressed people in the Middle East. Well, I'm with you. I think it is noble that people genuinely want to help people they don't know on the other side of the world. And there are so many minorities that are suffering oppression in Muslim countries. There are the Coptics in Egypt, and there are Christians in Lebanon and Iraq, whose numbers are decreasing at a genocidal rate. There are the Balak people and the Zaratostras in Iran, who no one cares about. But the first group that should spring to mind when talking about oppressed Muslims in the Middle East is, of course, the Kurds. Unlike the Palestinians, the Kurds have a very long history as a nation. Unlike the Palestinians, who have never missed an opportunity to miss an opportunity to establish peace and an independent state, the Kurds did all they could to establish their own state, but were ultimately betrayed by the colonial powers. The Kurds have suffered immensely in Muslim countries like Iran, Iraq, and Turkey, and no one cares about them. Where are all the freedom fighters when it comes to the Kurds? Let me give you a crazy, crazy example of just how little the world cares about them. Have you heard about the Halabja massacre? The Iraqis attacked Halabja with chemical weapons. It was the worst chemical weapon attack on civilians ever. 5,000 Kurds died. Many are still suffering from the consequences of the attack, which took place in 1988. I guess that most of you have never heard about it, seeing as nobody ever bothers to mention it. Let's have a look at Google. There are about 50,000 results for the Halabja chemical attack. How many results do you think that the Battle of Deir Yassin will have? This was a tiny, tiny battle that took place 75 years ago in 1948, when Israeli conquered the village of Deir Yassin and around 50 to 100 Arabs died. Deir Yassin has more than 400 thousand results. How can you make sense of the fact that a tiny 75-year-old battle gets about 10 times more information published about it than the worst chemical attack on civilians ever? My answer is that if Muslims die and you can't blame Israel, then it just isn't that interesting. Nobody cares, not even the Muslims. Do you have a better answer? Stolen land? Now that we have established that, in my opinion, pro-Palestinians don't really care about the real atrocities in the Middle East or about the oppressed people who are fighting for freedom, let's dive right into and talk about the Palestinians specifically. I often get comments about the Jews stealing land from the Palestinians. If it is true that the Jews stole land, then give me the name of one Jewish settlement that was built on Arab land before November 1947, 
when the Arabs rejected the partition plan, rejected peace, and the establishment of an independent state, and started a war to wipe out the Jews? Give me some, give me some names. You will not find a single case of Jews stealing land from Arabs. When the Arabs started a war, yes, they lost some land. That's what happens when you start a war. By the way, I can give you the names of many places that Arabs stole from the Jews before war broke out in 1948. There was a Jewish community living in Gaza until 1929, when the local Arabs, back then they didn't call themselves Palestinians, stole their property. So if you claim to be pro-Palestinian and know the history of the conflict, just give me one name of a Jewish settlement that was established on stolen Arab land before they started a war. Why wasn't an independent Palestinian state established between 1948 and 1967? So the Arabs started a war and lost. After the war, the Gaza area was held by the Egyptians and Judea and Samaria, which came to be known as the West Bank, were held by the Jordanians. Why didn't the Arabs, who at this point have started to call themselves Palestinians, establish a state back then? They had a whole 19 years to do just that. In 1967, the Arabs once again threatened to eliminate Israel, and again they lost. This time they lost the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Only then did the world start to get interested in the Palestinians and their independence. This I find interesting. When the Palestinians were under Arab rule, nobody talked about a Palestinian state in Gaza and the West Bank. And suddenly, after Israel won the war in 1967, the Palestinians became one of the most interesting people on planet Earth. So my question is, why didn't anybody talk about the independence of the Palestinians until 1967? And let me remind you that the 1950s saw the independence of Morocco, Algeria, and Libya. So the idea of Arabs establishing independent state was not a new thing. My answer to this question is simple. The Palestinians are not interested in having a state in Gaza and the West Bank alongside Israel. They are interested in wiping out Israel. And I have undeniable proof. The PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, was established in 1964 with the self-declared objective of eliminating Israel. So in 1964, which was three years before the occupation began, before there was one settlement, they clearly state their desire to eliminate Israel, not to be freed from Egypt and Jordan rule, but to eliminate Israel. Do you think I'm wrong? Please illuminate me on this one, Egypt. Staying with Egypt, let's say that everything I said is wrong. Israel is terrible, the Palestinians are mostly poor civilians, who are suffering under the cruel Israelis, and many well-meaning people in the West and in the Muslim world want to do all they can to help the poor souls in Gaza. My question is, why is no one mentioning Egypt? Egypt has a border with Gaza Strip. Egypt can simply open the gate and allow Palestinian refugees in. How many people from Gaza did Egypt allow in? Zero. That's strange. Look at the Europeans, Poland, Germany, and many other countries opened their doors and their hearts to people from Ukraine. It was a really noble response. What about the Egyptians and the Arab world? Where are they? Egypt is five times bigger than Israel, and it has plenty of room to spare. Oh, sorry, did I say five times bigger? I meant to say Egypt is 50 times, 50 times bigger than Israel. Egypt could open its border and all the rich Arab countries could help them, but no one mentions this option. Arabs helping other Arabs? No, that's a crazy idea. Pro-Palestinians are doing the anti-Israel part really well, but why not actually helping the Palestinians by focusing on Egypt? Genocide. Now this is an easy one. Israel is often accused of committing genocide. If Israel is committing genocide, how come there are more Palestinians every year? From 1948 to 2023, there have been more Palestinians every year. How do you reconcile that with the word genocide? I'm dying to hear how you can justify the word genocide when talking about the Palestinians. Blacks and Palestinians. The Palestinians like to present themselves as the indigenous dark-skinned people of the land, 
and we, the Jews, as the white European colonizing power. First of all, I find it funny and pretty pathetic that the Palestinians want and actually get the sympathy of black people in South Africa and black people in the US. Do you know what the Arabs call people with black skin? Abd, Abd, which means slaves. It was the European colonial powers who pressured Muslim countries to abolish slavery, and that only happened in the 20th century. If you have never heard about all this, it is not your fault. Those who like talking about colonialism don't like to talk about the way in which Arabs historically treated black people as slaves, and they definitely don't like to mention the fact that the main force putting an end to slavery in Arab countries was the European colonial powers. It doesn't fit the narrative, and those who talk about colonialism prefer narratives to the simple truth. As a tour guide, I can tell you that one of the poorest settlements in Israel is called Jisr Azalka. It is an Arab village or town, and a lot of the Arabs who live there are black people who originally came from Sudan and who experienced racism on account of their skin color. And there are many stories like that. Arab society is extremely racist towards black people. In some Arab countries, slavery was still legal 60 years ago. Black Palestinian solidarity is about as smart as queers for Palestine. By the way, Jews in the US were the biggest supporters of the civil rights movements in the 1960s. Somehow, the BLM movement and the student movements in the US tend to forget that fact, as well as the fact that the Arabs were all in with selling buying and using slaves. But let's go back to the Palestinians and their claims. First of all, most of the Jews in Israel today, 50 years ago and 150 years ago, were from Arab countries. In the long history of the Jews in the land of Israel, a 3,000 year old history, there were only about 30 years during which Jews from Europe numbered more highly than Jews from Arab countries. And in any case, Jerusalem and the land of Israel was already the homeland of all Jews some 1500 years prior to Islam even being established in the 7th century. And my question here to all the pro-Palestinians is, if the Palestinians are the indigenous people, how is it that when you go to archaeological sites, you never find Palestinian artifacts, but Jewish artifacts? 2,000-year-old Hebrew texts, texts that I can read, have been found in Israel. 3,000-year-old Jewish coins have been found. So if you find zero Palestinian artifacts and thousands and thousands of Jewish artifacts, then who are the indigenous people? The state of Palestine. The next question is more of a question for your imagination. Let's say we wake up tomorrow and from the river to the sea, Palestine is free of Israel and Jews. The Palestinians have a state. What do you imagine this country would be like? Based on how the Palestinian Authority and Hamas govern today, I think it would be like all its neighboring Arab Muslim countries, a country where gay people are thrown into jail if they are lucky and thrown from rooftops if they are not so lucky, a country with no human rights, where women don't enjoy the same rights as men, no democracy, a failing economy. Now, I might be wrong, this is a theoretical question. I'm basing my assumption on the way they have functioned up until now, if you think differently, please let me know what you think the Palestinian state would be like and what you are basing your assumptions on, the R word. I can talk a lot about the conflict, and I actually do. This is my life now, and I'm going to keep on doing it because it is important. But there is one very clear way to judge who is on the side of morality and who is not. Women. Look at how each side treats women. The Palestinians have assaulted hundreds of Israeli women, and how many Palestinian women have been subjected to the R-word by Israeli soldiers? Zero. As a feminist, I think that this tells the whole story. If there are tens of thousands of Israeli soldiers fighting the Hamas rapist Imach Shmam in Gaza, and not a single Palestinian woman is assaulted, that tells us a great deal about Israel and the Israeli soldiers. Here, I'm not even going to ask you to prove me wrong, because nothing you can say about it is smarter than what I just said. 
In Hebrew, there is a saying, tell me who your friends are and I will tell you who you are. I assume that the same phrase exists in many other languages because it is so true. Now, let's have a look at the Israelis. We are accused of colonialism, apartheid, ethnic cleansing, and genocide. And we also have a terrible, heavy accent when we speak English. I mean, we must be the most terrible people on earth. Yet, if you go to pro-Israeli rally in Berlin, London, or Wisconsin, you will see zero violence. Nothing. Israelis don't burn shops and cars. They don't participate in riots. They don't beat up cops. They don't burn the national flags of the countries they live in. They don't shout hateful slogans. Now look at pro-Palestinian rallies. For people who like to be seen as victims, they are pretty violent. So if you are pro-Palestinian, please explain to me how is it possible that Israelis are blamed for the worst crimes ever, yet they are so peaceful outside Israel, and the Palestinians and their Arabs and Muslim supporters are, how to put it nicely, are quite the opposite. If you are pro-Palestinian, please enlighten me with your smart answers to the questions I just asked. My next videos will be response video to the comments I get. If you are pro-Israel, and you like this video, then please give this video a like, subscribe, and feel free to share it. A lot of pro-Palestinians accuse me of being in the pay of the Israeli government. I wish the Israeli government were smart enough to pay me because I have a thousand video ideas, but I don't have the money or the resources to make them. I am a private individual working by myself for myself. If you want to support me, please share this video. There is a share button below the video, or you can copy the URL and paste it into Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. I try my hardest to make the best videos I can. If you want to see my channel grow, it is up to you to help me spread the word. Please share my videos on other platforms. I would really appreciate it. See you next week. Yalla bye.